right? In the prior example, we've seen a horizontal rectangle, picked up in the brush, saved it with transparent background. This time, we'll do that through the image. Um, this time, we'll uh, store, in fact, we'll erase to a different color. It doesn't have to be white necessarily. Let's say we have a slightly bluish tint on it, something like this. And we erase to that. And then we uh, set the paint color to, oh, I don't know, maybe green, something like this, dark green. And we do um, build a, an object, let's say, again, still with crisp edges for now. And we will change that very soon. But let's say we have something like this, All right? And then who knows, maybe a couple of other items here. <coughs> and so we have some sort of a shape, and we have some colors, and we want, again, the background here to be transparent. This time I'll use a different technique, which is not through the brush, but I will use the magic wand. The magic wand is applicable here because all of the parts that should be transparent are connected. It's an easy pick, easy peasy pick. So I'm going to go magic wand and select that. And you see now the color that I picked is still showing at its original color. The others that are not selected um, is uh, changing color and that's because I have selection overlay enabled. If I disable that you still see it at the original green color but uh, you also see the magic wand has uh, given you sort of the selection uh, giving you the marching ants indicating what actually is currently selected. That is a selection mask. Well we can use that selection mask as transparency indicator. We can tell when we save this to PNG or to TIFF that that's actually where the transparency is or where the opacity is. Now which one is it? Is it the transparency or the opacity? Well it's not the transparency. The pixels we pick, such as if I click the, the cross here, it's now selected just the cross. If I click this rectangle, it's selected just that. You might still see some uh, some dashed line here, but it's not marching, it's not animated anymore. So just uh, zoom in a little bit and you'll see that they will go away. The currently selected one has the animated marching ends, which is something you can also turn off, by the way. You can turn off the selection or you can, uh, <coughs> you know, do a couple, like show the marching ends or overlay to, to give you that overlay color. And the ones you have selected will remain at their original color. <coughs> but anything that is not selected will uh, be given a bit of a, a purple teal uh, or, or pink coloration. All right, so I'm going to go and select this one. I'm going to, no, there's a couple of techniques. You could use the background and be done with that selection, but you still need to invert it, right? That's easy too. You can go to here and invert the selection. Now you actually have the ones you want. Another technique is you select the first one, or let's say the cross, and then you say, well, I want to also select this one. How do I add this one to it? Well, because when you click it, then it removes this one from the selection. But you can use that with the Shift key. So press and hold the Shift key, and then click here, and that will add it to the selection. Press and hold the Shift key still down, and as you keep clicking with the Shift key down, it adds those to your current selection. So now you actually have that same selection that you want. You can actually see that selection as a mask here under the selection menu. Go to store selection, right? Just the same as you can store the image, which is image store image copy. That will store the RGB channels and it actually also stores the alpha channel, but it just doesn't show it here, except you could go here and do something with alpha, replace alpha. Uh, and so on, right? So if you are not sure whether it actually stored only the RGB channels or whether it indeed also stored the alpha channel, what you do is you clear the alpha channel, right? Clear that selection. Here's your original image with no special alpha selected, meaning everything is selected. And you have this stored copy here in which you can go and uh, replace alpha. It has now taken the stored copy of alpha that was here and replaced it back in here. So evidently that's uh, a quick way to save both the image and the alpha channel. Once you have a stored, uh, once you have a selection mask here in the alpha channel, one way to grab both the RGB color values and the selection mask is to store it into this. But from there, well, we don't save it. You can do a couple of things and work with it, but <coughs> you're not going to save it from here. So what you really want to do, let me go minimize this. What you really want to do is, now that you have the selection here, um, you want to save it with that 
right? So you go to save and um, something like this here. They use the file menu and save and uh, so they say this is uh, example 4 <coughs> and save it as a, T, uh, as a TIFF image or a PNG. Uh, I'm not sure how the PSD will work. Haven't used that so much. Targa will certainly work well. Uh, actually, you should use this one, the default Targa. Uh, if you want to even get some additional choices of do I want the RGB with the alpha or without the alpha and so on. So let's first change, uh, save it to PNG because that's the format that most people ask for. Uh, transparent PNG and that's it. Right? But there's another format you might want to use also and one thing I'll do here is I'll switch to default Targa and when you do that we get the extra dialog and with the dialog we can say oh I changed my mind I want it just RGB 24-bit color if you say 32-bit color it will also ch save the alpha channel with it uh, and then there are some other options you might want to save it as a TIFF right so for instance as a TIFF image there it is um, example for TIFF <coughs> there you go uh, you know, keep going. P try these formats. You you will find the one you like best. Chances are PNG will be just perfect, and a lot of other programs uh, can work with the PNG, and not only with the red, green, blue channels in that PNG, but also with the alpha channel. Looking at it as a transparency mask. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. We'll do some more very soon on additional shapes and scenarios more complex as we go.